diagramming of a categorical syllogism. Let me run through this one for you. Here's example number three. Every true gentleman owns at least one bow tie. Some philosophers do not own at least one bow tie. So, some philosophers must not be true gentlemen. Now this one's close to in standard form. You just have to figure out how to you know, put things like every true gentleman into standard form. And I would do it something like this. You would translate this as an all. All G for true gentlemen are those who own at least one bow tie. All G or B. Now my second one is clearly a what statement. Some philosophers do not own at least one bow tie. That's an O statement. Some P are not B for individuals who own at least one bow tie. And finally our conclusion is so, some philosophers, P, must not be true gentlemen, should be, are not G. Is this one in standard form? <clears throat> yes. Yeah, I did it again. This one's already in standard form. Our major uh, term is, is G, and it's in our major premise. Minor term is P, it's in our minor premise. Uh, the mood and figure are what? A, O, O, and what's the? Two, yeah. This is A, O, O, two. Now this looks like one you've seen somewhere before. Perhaps in the homework, but we're going to go ahead and do this one anyway. Let's then diagram this one. We'll make our upper left hand corner G, our upper right hand B, and our lower one P. We're going to diagram all G or B first. We're going to shade what? One and four. This is all G or B. We've shaded this. Now for our second premise, some P are not B. Where are we going to place our X? That is some P that's not a member of B. So we placed our X in the right place. Now, re remember from before, 4 is also some P that's not B, but we've already shaded it out, so we know there's no membership there. Now, we read the diagram to see if it's valid or not. I reiterate, don't make the mistake of also diagramming the conclusion, because what you do is you read the diagram and see if the conclusion has been diagrammed. If so, it's valid. If it fails to do so, then it's invalid. Has some P or not G been diagrammed? Yes! This is valid! The X represents some P that is not G. Therefore, this one is valid. Now, we could also go through the rules method, and uh, this one shouldn't be too cumbersome. Do I need to make any rigmarole over the negations? No, we've got our conclusion, which is a negation, and we have only one premise, which is also a negation. 
So negation rules, check out. Distribution rules. Do I have a distributed middle term? Yes. B is the middle term. While it doesn't distribute in the predicate of an A statement, it distributes here as the predicate of an O statement. So we've got a distributed middle term. Now, because our conclusion is an O statement, G, which is the predicate, must be distributed in its corresponding premise. And good news, G is the subject of an A statement. So our term that distributes in the conclusion distributes up here in the premise as well. So this one passes the distribution rules as well as the negation rules. And it confirms exactly what we've already shown via Venn diagram.